And why don't we start in verse 14. Are we ready, Bill? Okay. Okay, verse, Ephesians 4, verse 14 says, That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body, fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over into lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. We won't get all the way through that. There was just no period. So, yeah, uh, yeah, and I and I jumped into the middle of the sentence. Uh, no, verse seven. No, the sentence ended at sixteen, but seventeen, eighteen, and nineteen. I really just wanted to get seventeen. So. Uh, Yeah, I wonder, you know, I would, one of my curiosity, I don't know Greek, one of my curiosities about Greek, I would like to know if these run-on sentences in English are run-on sentences in Greek as well, or if it's just... In the old original Greek, there was no Greek in the original Greek, there was no Greek in the original Greek, there was no Greek in the original Greek. Really? Okay. Punctuation? Wow. And, and also at the at the time that um, the previous Bible was being translated, um, what we know today as Bible tools were not quite as good. Right. And so that's a lot of I think that's a lot of it too, is they because they they would just continue on a thought because it would be easy to see and not break it up with what they consider right. punctuation. Oh yeah. That's why uh, if it and as we all know, there's a lot of semicolons and colons. <laughs> so uh, the last time we were together, though, we, we finished really looking at the issue that men cause us to be children, tossed to and fro, cared about with every wind of doctrine. Um, these are the, the men that do this are, are doing it willfully. And that can be tough talk. And because, you know, oh, they just don't understand or whatever. Well, according to this verse, there's intent there. And um, they use... It's the, they do it by the slight of men, but with that artful trick, cunning craftiness, right? They lie in wait to deceive. Um, it's not that they're just, disinfo- just misinformed or just wrong. They're lying in wait to deceive. Those are, those are, uh, there's intent there. And um, it is hard to accept because you, ju- you, you want to believe somebody preaching the word has got their heart in the right spot. And you know it's easy to it's easy to pass judgment on somebody in a mega church. We all, okay, we're rightly or wrongly, by the way, you can be a pastor of a mega church and not preach bad doctrine. I mean, you don't see it very often, but you can't just because you're a pastor of a mega church doesn't mean you're a bad guy. But it's really hard to see the guy at the local community church or the local Baptist church thinking thinking in this in this way. Now there is the verse too that talks about people that want to teach the law don't understand what they teach. So there is there is that issue too. There are there are those that don't understand. I I think you're right because you hear about people. You know we've seen. Uh, they have itching, we- itching ears, looking for those teachers. Those, they're looking for teachers that'll tell them what they want to teach, tell them what to the, the teach what they want to hear. I mean, and l- let's be honest. When I'm, if I'm going to go to a, I mean, there's a million conference, Bible conferences in America. I'm going to go to one that has a grace teacher. I, that's what I'm going to set out to look for. Yeah, I don't know if I call it an itchy ear, but I mean, I would call it sound doctrine. But yeah, that's uh, that's for. Well, the other people that want to put themselves under the law, they're going to go find somebody that's, you know, it, it, 
it's rare that you're going to go to a conference that, that teaches something you don't already are at least somewhat predisposed to. So when you see that, such as a guy like Dean Antonucci, that that's a pretty big deal. He got re, he got. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> introduced to something that was totally the opposite of what he was teaching. And, and just to see that change of heart and, and have him show up, I'm sure there was a lot of skepticism that day he showed up. A guy like Dean's pretty rare. Most guys are going to put their back. You know, even Corey, you know, Corey showed up and he said, you know, I love the way he tells that story. I found some guy in a hat and I asked him if he, if he agreed with this gray stuff. Well, the guy in the hat, of course, is Richard Jordan. <laughs> because the same thing. Corey got introduced to it by somebody out of Calvary Chapel. And, he's, and he had an open heart, and he went and he talked to the guy in the hat. <laughs> but, you know, anyhow, having said all that, according to what this verse here, what we're looking at here, is if you're tossed to and fro, if you're carried about within, with every wind of doctrine, it can be by the slight of men, and it can be by them wanting to deceive. And I, I, it, it, is, it, it says that that will happen if we're not mature. If, we don't, if we're not going through that maturity process, those people will come along and they will move us because they're going to want to put people in their church, compare their numbers with, with other people. They want the glory. They're serving their own belly. Um, they're looking for their own prestige. And for the most part, willing to preach whatever fills the pew. And it, it really does. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, absolutely. We put, we put on our conference this week. I didn't want to have an empty room. <laughs> you know, um, we're all human. We're all human. Now, not that I'm any great guy, but I wouldn't change. I, if, if there were two people in that room, I would teach what we teach. I, it wouldn't change it. I, we, you know, we wouldn't change it and say, come, let me tell you all about baptism. Because to put, you know, people in there. Of course, that would be a great way to do it. Come, let me tell you all about baptism. Have them all, have, have them all come, and then teach them about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That might be a way to go. <laughs> but that would be lying in wait to deceive. <laughs> that would not be handling the word of God. Uh, that would be ha handling the word of God deceitfully. You know, saying one thing and doing another. And we talked about that. You know, don't, don't do that. Anyhow, there is great confusion in the church today uh, because they're kept children, because they're tossed to and fro. Um, and the reason for that is they reject the dispensational Bible study. That is the issue. They've, they've, they've uh, rejected the Bible rightly divided. Um, when you approach the, the Word of God dispensationally, all that confusion goes away. And we, we've talked about that a lot. So with that in mind, and this is the question I asked when we, when we ended last time, so what to do? That's, that's fine, and we can talk all day long and about all that. But what to do? You want to focus on the problem, not the problem. Or you want to focus on the solution. And really, we need to focus on the solution, right? Well, the next verse tells us, speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. And then it goes on. Well, the first thing there, speak the truth in love. Grow up into him. Grow up is the opposite of being a child. Look over at first. We're going to come back here a lot, obviously. But look over at 1 Corinthians 3. We are to grow up into him. Speaking of the Corinthians, he says, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 1. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto, um, as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, Neither ne yet now are ye able, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Paulus, are ye not car carnal? They were babes. They were children. All they knew was the gospel rela in relationship to their salvation. They didn't understand that their behavior would be corrected by the gospel, too. They didn't really, it appears, even have a understanding that they're... That they're um, behavior wasn't correct. They seemed to be very comfortable in allowing the things that were going on to go on. That they're, okay, I'm saved, I'm forgiven, and 
it sounds like a lot of the lifestyle uh, that was going on, that was going on in the town of Corinth was also going on in the church, and they didn't they weren't able to say, hey, we're not supposed to. We'll, that's not who we are anymore. Okay, so they understood they were saved by grace. They did not understand that it's grace that teaches us, and that it's by grace that we mature. And you see here too, they were causing strifes and divisions. And look over. This is an interesting thing here. Look over at First Corinthians fourteen verse twenty six. It says, how is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. So we're going to follow up on that when we get a little further in Ephesians. It talks about the edification of the body. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 26. Oh, yeah, it, no problem. And you see there, he says, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine. Now the context here is this is is the sign gifts, but it's almost like Paul saying, "How can you all have a doctrine?" I can also, you know, okay, so you're filled with the Holy Ghost, and you, you all and you, you get a new song, or you you're able to speak in tongues. But why would you have a different doctrine? Yeah, this is a book of reproof. He's saying, hey, which means you're you're wrong. Let me correct what you're doing. It's right. It's right. Now, at the time, that may have been happening with the, the, the prophet in the local assembly, but it would have been one or two people. It would not have been every one of you. Right. Right. Every one or two have right. It, exactly. And, and my take on that would be the person, that the prophet in the local assembly, or the, pro, or the one or two of them, or three of them, we maybe were getting revelation or getting doctrine. Now, we always would have come to Paul first. But if something would have come up in that organ, in that local assembly, that's the guy that should have set it up and said, hey, that's not right. And the guy could have come, well, Paul never said that. Well, Paul taught this because you could only handle it. But now as we're maturing, I've gotten this. But it sounds here like everybody, well, everybody's gotten it. And you go back to what we just read. I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollo. So what you had here is probably a bunch of factions saying, well, I'm of this guy, and I'm of this guy, and I'm of this guy. Exactly right, and I, I don't mean to continue to bring him up, but I remember uh, Corey told me one time when he was in that other church, they desperately, he desperately wanted the sign gifts because that would show him that. Now, I mean, I don't, Corey does not believe that anymore, but when he was in that, that was the teaching. If you can speak in tongues, then you're. That's how you knew you were full of the Holy Ghost, and it's yeah. It's also a toss, being tossed to and fro. It's also every wind of doctrine. It's what's going on right here. And it happened here because it, was in mature, it wasn't, these were not mature saints. That's right. If you jump down to 29, talking about revelation and doctrine. Let the prophet speak two or three, and let the other judge. If anything be revealed to a, um, and if anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. So you see, there was some of that going on, but but a prophet would say something. The prophet would say, "Okay, I have this revelation," and the other two would say, "Yes, that's correct," or "No, it's not." If one did say it, the other person didn't need to say it. Once was enough. You see, he says there. Um, if anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let the first hold his peace. You don't need to, only one person needed to get it. Exactly, exactly. Again, it, it, the situation in the church at that time was a little different because you had this supernatural verification, if you will. Um, but my point is, even at that time, people were standing up and saying, hey, I've got a doctrine, I've got a revelation. 
I've got a beautiful song. You know, and it's interesting. He says a song. Okay, a, per a person could come up with their own song. It happens all the time. But you're not going to get a new doctrine. Right. You know, it's, it's very, it's very, very interesting. Um, and this is why we are to mature, so that we are no longer children. And we mature by speaking. Go back to Ephesians 4.15. Speaking the truth in love. We mature by speaking the truth in love. Speaking the doctrine of the gospel of grace, the truth of Paul's gospel. Now, it's interesting, but speaking the truth in love. You can't speak the truth in love or not in love if you don't know the truth. So when it talks about but speaking the truth in love, the assumption there is that you know the truth. So there's an issue of study that's already part of this of this verse. As we become perfected and as we mature, we're not to, tossed to and fro. We don't get caught up in false doctrine. We don't get caught up in earthly things, in the bondage of the law. And the other issue is we speak the truth in love, not in contention. Maturing in Pauline doctrine results in us speaking the truth in love, which results in us growing up into him in all things. Now we're going to look at all those phrases. I don't know if I, rem I can't remember if we, if we talked about it this weekend or not, if I ran out of time. But um, if I ran out of time, because I can't remember what I was just going to say. Uh, uh, the, the issue about, uh, about um, sharing the gospel, we, uh, about not doing it in contention. I mean, obvi obviously we didn't. Okay, obviously we didn't. But I, I just, I just want to highlight, it does say speaking the truth in love. In contention, in anger. Um, oh, I was going to say, uh, Paul with the Thessalonians was gentle, but it doesn't mean he wasn't bold. Okay, Moses was meek, but he was not not bold. He was not a wilting flower. Um, and just because you do something in love doesn't mean you stand for the truth, and stand solidly for the truth. It probably means you don't come and mock somebody you're sharing the Word of God with. It means when somebody comes to you and says, hey, I don't understand something, you find the time. I mean, one of the, this will be honest, one of the big aspects with love is time. I mean, do you have time to give to that person? What's the biggest thing a parent gives their children? Love, time, right? 20 years of your life, but, and more importantly, how much throughout the day? I don't understand what you're saying. I don't know why you guys, what's, what's the deal with this Paul guy? Well, let's go have some coffee, come over for a breakfast, and let's go through and I'll show you some things. Just because somebody doesn't, under, now we've talked about these people that lie in way, but just because somebody doesn't understand doesn't mean they're rejecting it to either. The, uh, the other, and the reason, and just because somebody comes and, hey, can you explain this, doesn't mean you're going to explain it, and they're going to say, hey, I'm on board. And that can be a frustration. That can be a real frustration. April went through that last week. Um, she shared some things, and you know they would kind of patted her on the butt and said, "Thanks, April. No, play along. No, run along." And, and uh, we've all been there, I think. Um, but you keep coming back. And, you know, as people have questions, you, you continue to do it because you continue to speak the truth in love. Look over at First Timothy one. Verse 3. It says, As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. From which, having swerved, having turned aside unto vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say, nor whereof they affirm. Instead of getting caught up in the legalism of the past, we need to be speaking of the grace of the but now. Even when he's talking about that, though, he talks about the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience, and of faith unfeigned, sincerity. 
I think the other thing too, remember when we when you speak the truth with somebody that doesn't understand, has questions, they may have a sincere faith. They can still be wrong. And you have an opportunity, knowing the truth, to share that with them. And to share it with them in love and and understand that Paul didn't have it all, all at the beginning. It was progressively revealed. That's right. We speak the truth in love. If you, in, that's right. right. In most cases, you speak the truth in contention, the Holy Spirit doesn't have a chance. Yes, it's a, exactly. Must be gentle. And again, that does not mean not bold. And that also does not mean, okay, well, we'll agree to disagree. Right. I mean, w we all know firsthand experience. Somebody comes to you yelling. And, and like I said, what, what you're really doing, you're not undermining yourself, you're really undermining the Holy Spirit. You're just not even giving the Holy Spirit an entrance, you know, and and it can be tough when the, when when those attacks are coming, when people are coming to you, and they're coming into some tension, it's real easy to want to get back up and and it's tough to take that breath, take a step back, take the take the attack, and realizing the attack's gonna run out of steam. If you can get through a little bit, the attack will run out of steam, and you go, well, let's go down and look at this, and then. Don't forget, Paul says too, after the first or second time, a heretic just rejects. There are people you're not going to get through, so move on. Move on. Um, you know, the old analogy too. Don't ar in, in public, don't argue with a fool because then nobody can tell who the fool is. You know, you get into a, 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 a contentious match with somebody, especially publicly, you're not going to win it over anybody. You know, then it, just, then it just becomes who has the quickest point. Who has the best point? Richard was telling a story one time. I thought it was really great. He was watching a debate, and the guy that didn't have the right information had the best answers and the quickest answers, and the the the, the audience responded because every time he every time every time the guy that had the truth made a point, this guy was able to respond to the point just like that, and he looked like he had the truth. Didn't matter what he was saying, but just the way he come across. And the guy with the truth, he would take a minute, collect his thoughts, and put it out, and it looked like he was stumbling. And so you got to remember that, you know, you got to be real careful when you get in these big, you know, trying to win a debate in public and be contentious. The chances, the, the chances of sharing, speaking the truth and love in a situation like that are going to be very, very minimal. But again, you always got to stand, and, and it can be hard. You know, it can be hard. You do it once or twice, and you get, you know, you kind of get, not, you know, uh, kind of slapped around a little bit, not physically, but you kind of get, and it's tough to get up the next time. Yeah. And There's a couple things there. One, not knowing the answer. And that comes from right division not being taught. Dispensational Bible study not being taught. The other thing that comes from is not knowing how to respond. Having, having this thought, that's not what I'm taught, but I think that's right, and I don't know what to do. It, I, I've been there, and it, it becomes frustrating. I know what that person's saying is not right. I know what the truth is, but I can't get it. I can't bring it out, and and that can that can be a, a very fresh. And that again, that's why we study. That's why we study, and that's why you know I always think this thing about speaking it in love. For, for me, maybe it's because you know because of this patience issue. I, somebody said I have. Um, th when I see that that issue in love or charity, to me it always means taking a breath not responding like that because if I respond like that to contention it's not coming out in love it, it is not my, my 
for me, for me, there are some people whose just natural responses would be to do it in love. And uh, for I got to, you know, if when it's coming at me, I got to take a step back and. Whew. So, um, teaching sound doctrine results in charity, results in pureness of heart, sincere faith. And any other doctrine that he talks about here, one, it ministers questions, not godly edifying. But it's also taught by the slight of men and by cunning craftiness. Um, you see, this is the one we were talking about in verse 7. Desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say, nor whereof they affirm. And, you know, we're not going to study verse 7 here, but, but what that's saying is a desire to be teachers of the law, they don't understand what the law is for. They're telling you to change your, you can change, stop sending your life by the law when sin's really just to point it out. And then they double down on it. Not only do they teach it, which, which is teaching wrong, but then they take a stand and say, you must do the law. And then they get it all mixed up. You know, the one I, I, I hear so often is, well, you got to keep the Sabbath. Whatever day of the week you want that to be. I don't understand what they say, and I'm not going to affirm it. <laughs> they don't understand. They've taken something from it. They're teaching the Sabbath is a law program. They're teaching the law. They've gone back. They said, you are to keep the Sabbath. A guy got killed for not keeping the Sabbath. It's a serious deal. I mean, don't dismiss the seriousness of the Sabbath for Israel. For Israel. Jesus healed on the Sabbath, though, and said the, the Sabbath was made for man. Man was not made for the Sabbath. So they don't understand what they're teaching. And then they double down on it, such as, okay, you, you got to keep the Sabbath because God wants you to rest. God designed you to rest. I don't know about that. So make the Sabbath any day. If your work schedule means that you get Wednesdays off, then Wednesday is your Sabbath. How does that work? It, it, it's a, again, that's exactly what he's talking about there. Um, Again, speaking the truth in love involves two things. Speaking the truth and doing it in love. We are to stand for the truth. Over and over again, Paul talks about standing for the truth, standing for the truth, stand fast. Um, look over at 1 Corinthians 13. Verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. So he can. It's interesting when you look at this. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. He's saying. Though I can speak to all of God's creation. Every tongue of man and every tongue of the angels. However many there are. And have not charity. I am become sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. He can speak to anybody. But if he doesn't do it in love. In charity. It's just. It's a, I mean, tongues of men and of angels, there's really nothing else left. Um, only in love are you able to effectively speak the truth. The issue there is, you know, is um, effectively. You know, we, we will all raise kids, you know. You, as, as much as you think you're drilling that point home and you're yelling, you probably get, you do get a lot further if you do it calmly. Same point, same truth, two different ways to do it. I can't see them yelling. I'm wondering if they have any concept of what I'm saying. <laughs> Absolutely. That was always, I, like I said, I think I would have learned my lesson well sooner than I did, but I, Ricky has the same problem. Right? <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, it was that look <laughs> that was, like, was, um, it was touched for a minute, you know. 
Look at verse 4. 1 Corinthians 13. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4. Speaking of speaking the truth in love. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Envieth not, vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Suffers long and it's kind. When, when you're speaking the truth, you are going to need to be long-suffering. There is going to be personal attacks. There's going to be rejection. This is where maturity matters. Can you take those attacks, put on that spiritual warfare, the spiritual garments it talks about over in uh, Ephesians, and remain charitable through that? And that, that's tough. I and mean, we're talking about really getting into life and how life works and not getting angry. Charity envieth not. The people that don't speak the truth have bigger numbers. Charity envieth not. Speak the truth. You know, I mean, I think sometimes you look at this and well, yeah, that doesn't apply. But then you start looking at it, wow. Charity vaunteth not itself is not puffed up. We're not better than people because we understand the Bible rightly divided. I I told April the other day, I, just, I, I, did, I did something that came out of my mouth and it, it didn't mean anything bad by it. But I had, in my other Bible study, I had written down an answer to the one of the questions. And as just so happened, the guy said, well, you know, I had a question about this and I actually wrote the question in my notes. And he read whatever his question was. And I turned to him, I said, well, I have the answer. I wrote it right here. And as soon as I said, I have the answer, I went, I didn't mean it that way, but there's no way that came out well. <laughs> you know? And, you know, we, everybody had a good laugh about it and everything. But, bond is not itself. It's not puffed up. Kind of, um, boast, yeah, boast. It goes along with, with puff, puffing yourself up. Um, what's the exact phrase he uses? Va charity vaunteth not itself. Um, makes a boast of itself. Says, look at me. Says, I'm smarter than you. Says, I have the answer to whatever your question is. <laughs> you know, I just thought it was, I thought, you know, my point was, I thought it was funny that I had written an answer and he had a, written a question. And they went together. And as, as, it, as soon as it came out of my mouth, I went, oh, are you kidding me? So, but that happens. Look at verse 11. I think it's very interesting in light of what we're reading in Ephesians about don't be a child, but be, grow up into him. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a face darkly, through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity. As a child you're tossed to and fro. He talks here about, as a child, his speaking and his understanding and his thought. Um, as I was reading this, I was going, you know, I understand the context is really what he's talking about is, is, is this being a child and now being an adult and putting away the things a child would and now being an adult. But I got to looking at it too and I go, you know, there was a time in Paul's life he didn't speak the truth. There was a time in Paul's life when he didn't understand that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. All these things are when he was wrapped up in legalism. There was a time, you know, I, I spake as a child. Okay, that's he didn't speak the truth. He spoke those threatenings. I understood as a child. Didn't understand the Lord Jesus Christ was actually Israel's Messiah. And then he later comes to understand the Savior of the world. I thought as a child. You know, he thought he was in the will of God when he was rounding up the little flock putting them in jail and consenting them to their death. And I just, I just thought it was interesting that he, com he t uses a childhood and growing up, being a child and growing up as, as opposite forces there in Ephesians. And when you come over here, he s talks about when he was a child. And then he says, but when I became a man, when he grew up, 
He put away those childish things. He put away that legalism of the past, those fables he told Timothy about, and started dealing with the grace of God and speaking it in love and in charity and speaking boldly and understanding now what he was teaching. And I, it kind of changed the way I look at that verse a little bit, and I, and I saw a, a dispensational aspect to that verse. And because that really... Par- What's that? Yeah, exactly. You see, you see that 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 growth that growth issue being under, and, and it's it, it's a totally different aspect. Under the law, you're under governors and tutors, or tutors and governors. However you put it, you, you just you just are. That's the deal. The the law tells you what not to do, and the governor limits what you can do. You have no yeah. You don't have any liberty. E- everything that happens in life, there's a law for that. <laughs> there's an app for that, right? There's a law for that. In in grace. You grow up into him, you develop the mind of Christ, and you make your own decisions about what's going on in the circumstances in life. And the goal would be that they would be in line with the decision that Christ would make. And that's the difference between being a child and being an adult. And a child being in that legal system, in the but now, in the dispensation of grace, they are going to get moved around with every because how do you figure how do you how do you reconcile those things? If you're going to take the if if you accept that the whole word of, that this the whole book is true, and you accept but you also accept that you are under the law and you are a part of Israel, then I can see how it could be very easy to get blown away with every wind of doctrine, because somebody would grab a verse here in Paul's epistles, oh yeah that makes sense, and then the next guy would come along and say yeah but this oh yeah that makes sense too. And then, this, well, the third guy, well, that makes sense, too. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Again, it comes back to dispensational Bible study. Not understanding the unique program. So what do they do? Instead of uh, getting in and figuring out and, and, doing, and sharing the sound, doc- learning sound doctrine and speaking sound doctrine, they jump from Acts to Hebrews. They don't, we don't even, they don't even deal with Paul's epistles. That's a great point. What do you keep your What do you teach your children? I know it so because the Bible tells me so. You tell the, you, you, you tell a five year old, the Bible is true. Yeah, right. You you don't go to a you don't go to a five year old and say like, oh, the whole Bible is true. This is specifically to us today, and here's the differences. Right. You would go to them and say that you, you would get them based in the foundations. Here's the word of God. And then as they grew up, and they could handle, they were no longer babes, and they could handle more meat, then you would do that. That's a great, it's a, it's a great point you bring up, because yeah, being under the law would be that way. Because they never come to the point where they say, "Right, exactly." You, you, you. A, a child says, "This whole, this whole book is true." An adult says, "This is the word of truth, and it needs to be rightly divided." I need to learn how to rightly divide the word of truth. It's all true. That doesn't change. But like. Aquila and Priscilla told Apollos, a way, more, a way more better, more, more, way, way more perfect. Yeah, I guess if I'm a quote something, I should know the quote, huh? So look over at First Timothy four. A great discussion tonight, guys. I love that. I mean it. First Corinthians four. <laughs> First Timothy. First Timothy four. Now, the context here is Paul writing to Timothy about standing up, even though he's young. Don't let people attack that. But as we read through this, 
I want you to think about this just as this is what an example of what a believer should be. Okay, because it's let no man despise verse twelve. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers. In word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. We are to be examples in all those things. In our words, in our conversation, in our charity, our actions, in our spirit, our demeanor, in our faith, standing for the doctrine, and in purity. We're to, be, we're to live like we're supposed to. How do you do that? Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which is given thee by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate, meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. That word ex exhortation, to incite by words or advice to advise, warn, or caution. Your life should show what a believer looks like and acts like. One of the attributes of a mature believer is in charity. What we're talking about here is the adorning of the doctrine. This is adorning the doctrine, and this is speaking the truth in love. I love verse 16. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in the, doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. What's it? Yeah. I think it's. I don't think it. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't think it is off topic. But topic. What we're talking about. We're still talking about speaking the truth, in love. You talk about what Paul talks about in Galatians. How he profited in his religion. He's saying, "Look at me. This is all that I have. All the world could see him in his beautiful robes, and he had probably had those beautiful scrolls, and he had the ear of the high priest, and probably, you know, probably some payola to ro some Roman soldiers. He was a freeborn Roman, which was a big deal. Even among Gentiles, to be a freeborn Roman was a big deal." Look at me. And he counted it all for done. He's, and he doesn't tell just Timothy that this will profit him. He says that thy profiting will appear to all. Doing this, the prophet will be maturity. That's what the prophet here is. Uh, he's going to look like an, a mature saint. He's not going to be rich. He's not going to have a big flock. I mean, He's in the process of losing his, losing his church. I mean, not his church, but losing his congregation. Paul's already lost most of them. Right, exactly. He's going to be mature. And he says, you do this so that your profiting may appear to all, so that you can be an example. Right? What, what's he talking about? He's not talking about, well, you do it so you're mature, so people think you're the best. He's telling him, be an example of a believer. If you're an example of a believer, it's something that does appear to all. The issue is exactly do these things and then he picks it up in verse 16. Take heed unto thyself and to the doctrine. Continue in them. Continue in the doctrine. For in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Now that's not soul salvation. That's from just the, the, the legalism that was going on. Look at verse 7. Refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. That bodily exercise, that's that religious treadmill that you're on, doing all that stuff. You're going here, you're going there, you look good, but it's nothing. 
doesn't it doesn't profit you at all. It's not working out exactly. Well, yeah, old wise fables. I, I always compare that to the thing he talks about the guys that are running around to to the women's houses, always leading around to the, you know just yeah, you know old wise fables. Um, it, it could be it could be anything you wanted it to be. My guardian angel protected me. You know, uh, yeah, this is First Timothy. This is written at the end. I got another hanky from Paul. Mm. I got healed at church on Sunday. I prayed really hard. This is one I we know firsthand. I prayed really hard, and the doctor spent a couple extra minutes with my son, and they found something. And they were able to fix him, and it's only because of the power of God. That child died shortly thereafter. Yeah, yeah, that 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 that, that happened, and their son was on the operating table, and they couldn't find what the problem was, and and they they gave it. They they looked around for a few more minutes. They found something. They fixed it. They thought they had it, and then six months later or something. Um. Go back to the, the chapter 1. Uh, I'm sorry, verse 1 of chapter 4. And you'll see the things that he's telling that, that, that make up this bodily exercise. Um, now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in latter times sons shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from meats, um, and you know, and on and on it, he goes, and he, and he says, you know, in verse six, if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, whereunto thou hast attained. A great study is to go figure out what does Paul mean. We're not going to do it tonight, but whereunto thou hast attained. Go look at what T Timothy attained to. He was Paul's son in the faith. He's the Timothy, this young man, is the guy that he sent to the churches to get comfort. He didn't send the Paul. I mean, he sent some of those guys, but time and time, at one point, he says about Timothy, I'm sending Timothy to you because i got no other man like-minded who will naturally, who will naturally care for you. It's a great study to just go see what Timothy attained to, and you, you kind of get that. He was an example of what a believer should be. So the salvation here is taking heed unto thyself because he had that doctrine in him and teaching that doctrine that he was reading until Paul came to continue. And he, what would he have been reading? Well, everything else that Paul had written up to that point. He saved them himself and them that hear thee from that legalism and the old wise tale, and they would keep them in the sound doctrine. Paul's always talking about that. We are out of time, aren't we? <laughs> 49, okay. Um, your life should show what a believer looks like, what a believer acts like. One of the attributes of a mature believer is true, is uh, charity, is doing things in love. Let's go back to Ephesians 4. Wow, we didn't get very far. I, can, I, I, I tell you what, though, guys, this is, this is the way that should be. This is... With, with no offense to the recording, I put together a lesson for here. The conversations are about this. You know, it, whatever, whatever happens on the recording, if it, it helps, that's great. But this is about this. It's not about, it's not about the recording. Um, uh, where, where are we? Oh, 15. Speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Um, next time, we'll start looking at grow up into him in all things. Oh, what does it mean? What does it look like? Because there's, there's, there's some issues there. There's some phraseology there that we're going to pay some real close attention to. Um, and it, it, for me, it was real exciting when I got to looking at it. And 
that's kind of cool. And then we'll start jumping along and we'll make some progress. But it's, I'm having fun with, I'm having fun with this series of verses. I hope you guys are. Um, but you know, it's a, it's a good question. What it, what does it mean to grow up into Him? And what does that what does that all things have to do with? Is it are we growing up into Him in auto mechanics? No, <laughs> no. But but and I think we all know that. But but what is the all things? And we'll see. We'll see. We don't even have to look at the book of Ephesians. Leave the book of Ephesians, and we can figure out what that means. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you that we can come together and study Your Word, and that we do have the Word of Truth, and that. Per your instructions, we understand we are to rightly divide this. Look at and study your word dispensationally. Come to the knowledge of the truth through sound doctrine that was revealed to Paul and, and through the writings of Paul to us, Lord. My prayer here would be that even as the attacks come, we would all continue to share the truth, to speak the truth, and to speak it in love. And it can be tough sometimes. It can be very discouraging which is one of the main attacks of the devil, Lord. My prayer would be to all just lean on you, trust you, speak the truth, and let the Holy Spirit uh, do the heavy lifting, if you will, Lord. We thank you for all things in your name.